They may be celebrities, but they had to grow up like the rest of us. And sometimes that means making tough choices. It goes back to an, an early kind of terrible experience right, in your life. Right. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with this story of what happened, it's amazing. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 celebrities who were juvenile delinquents. This trade requires a high school diploma. I swear to God, I heard Miss Vinny going, I told you, I told you you need it. Even in prison, you need a high school diploma. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day. So be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at those entertainers who had rocky childhoods in that certain decisions they made while growing up led to serious consequences, which the performers may or may not have come to regret in their adult life. He, he told me that you stole a TV, dog, from BET. <laughs> well, you know what? This was around a time when BET wasn't playing my videos and they was... <laughs> Number 10, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. What'd you do your time, pal? Up north. It's impossible not to love The Rock. From his wrestling days to his movie days, he's always been charming. But it took a lot of work to get to where he is now. Being arrested multiple times before the age of 17 sure sounds like a tough thing to get over. Today, it's as hard to picture an afroed teenage Dwayne Johnson as it is to picture him being involved in a theft ring. Yet both happened. Uh, in Hawaii, I used to get in trouble a lot, doing a lot of things I shouldn't have been doing, arrested multiple times. Evicted from his apartment at age 14 while living in Hawaii, he would target tourists, stealing upmarket clothing and jewelry, and shoplifting Snickers bars. Number 9. Stephen Fry How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? A fascinating man, as intellectual as he is charismatic, Stephen Fry worked to get where he is, but was a troubled youth nonetheless. Expelled from school at 15, Fry's darkest teen days came at age 17. Arrested for credit card fraud, young Stephen spent three months in prison after being found in the possession of a stolen card. It's hard to believe, yes, but how he got caught is suitably Stephen Fry. He was arrested in a four-star hotel room after buying classy shoes and an Ingersoll watch. Mind you, it also didn't help that the hotel he chose was directly across the street from the police station. Number 8. Mike Tyson I can feel it coming in the air tonight. This is one person you definitely do not want to get physical with. Before he was the youngest heavyweight champion of all time, Mike Tyson had his fair share of run-ins with the law. Snatching a purse at the age of 12 was only part of his spree, during which he was arrested multiple times before the age of 13. Young Tyson's life of crime, however, led to his eventual break, as it was a detention center counselor who first saw his potential as a boxer and introduced him to Custom Auto, who not only helped him become the heavyweight champion, but also became his legal guardian. Number seven, Drew Barrymore. And that's a hard lesson, but it was a very good lesson for me. Drew Barrymore's adult life has had its bolder moments, but they pale in comparison to her childhood. A star at seven thanks to her role in E.T. the Extraterrestrial, she became a smoker by age nine, added booze to the mix at 11, pot at 12, and cocaine at 13. Either you make it out or you don't, and it's, it's very scary. A Studio 54 regular even as a child, Barrymore entered rehab at 14, and after a suicide attempt, eventually lived with David Crosby for a few months, who was himself known for substance abuse issues in an effort to remain sober. Number six, Snoop Dogg. But I know some people that know some people that rob some people. Selling weed while in high school is one thing, but Snoop took it to a whole other level, and that level involved cocaine trafficking. That's not to say he didn't also sell weed. Cameron Diaz can attest to that. But I remember him, he was very tall and skinny, wore lots of ponytails in his head, and I'm <laughs> pretty sure I bought weed from him. Yeah! Yeah. During his post-high school years, he was in and out of prison, continuing with his criminal actions, traveling with a gang, and possessing illegal drugs and even firearms. Although Snoop has regular drug-related brushes with the law, his arrest in 1993 was for something much more serious, murder. Detained in connection with a killing conducted by his bodyguard, Snoop was cleared of all charges soon after. 
Drop it like it's hot. When the pigs try to get at you, park it like it's hot. Park it like it's hot. Number five, Eminem. But I'm sorry, mama, for cleaning out my closet at the time. I was angry, rightfully, maybe so. Never meant that far to take it, though. Growing up without knowing his father and always moving from town to town was not an easy life for Eminem, especially when he constantly fought with his mother. Bullied to the point where his mom filed a suit against his school, Eminem eventually dropped out at age 17 due to poor grades and poor attendance. Marshall Mathers' troubled youth also introduced him to his two-time spouse Kim and set up his mother's infamous $10 million lawsuit for slander. Sorry, mama. I never meant to hurt you. Number 4. Merle Haggard and white lightning still the biggest thrill of all. It's hard to picture country icon Merle Haggard beating someone during a burglary attempt, but that was when he was barely a teen. It's safe to say Merle turned his life around. But when he was young, he was sent to a juvenile detention center multiple times for larceny and truancy, and even escaped. Going to prison, however, is what turned things around for him. He earned a high school equivalency diploma and played in the prison band. Haggard's post-jailhouse success even earned him a pardon from then-California governor Ronald Reagan. When you're running down my country halls, you walking on the fighting side of me. Number three, Danny Trejo. I went to juvenile hall so many times, I thought Mexicans were supposed to go. An actor with over 300 film credits sure has a lot of stories to tell, and not just fictional ones either. Beginning as a petty criminal alongside his uncle and shady mentor, Trejo eventually earned jail time for stabbing a man with a broken bottle. Additionally, his early life was also littered with drug use, from marijuana to whatever he could get his hands on. Trejo's drug life eventually led him to be arrested in 1965 for selling drugs to an undercover police officer. Later completing an in-prison 12-step program, Trejo became a drug counselor and worked to help others struggling with addiction. Number 2. 50 Cent Usually, when someone's been shot nine times, they die, but not 50 Cent. It takes a special kind of person to be able to survive that, and his past no doubt hardened him to the pains and struggles of adulthood. Being born to a cocaine dealer is not the best start to a childhood, and Fiddy became a drug dealer himself at age 12. His life as a pusher, however, went downhill when his school's metal detectors indicated he was carrying a gun. Following a pair of arrests in 1994, Fiddy was sent to a juvenile detention center and decided to turn his life around ultimately adopting his 50 cent moniker. But the nine... Where, where were you shot? Where? Like, in front of my grandmother's house. But like, where, in the where on your body? <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. It's disappointing to me. I, I wouldn't have done this job if the president said everything is on the table. I respect the, the president. Uh, if some president asked me to do something, I would do it. In another sense, it's about um, uh, some people refusing to give second chances regardless of how earnest or how honest or how sincere a person is when they're trying to get their life back together. Number one, Mark Wahlberg. That's my one ask, that you give me a second chance and allow me to go free today. Blinding someone is a hard thing to live with, and it's something Mark Wahlberg has lived with his entire adult life. When he was 16, he beat a Vietnamese man, which resulted in the victim supposedly going blind in one eye. It was only much later in life that the victim revealed he'd actually lost the eye during the Vietnam War. Before that, though, Wahlberg was addicted to cocaine at only 13 years old and dropped out of school entirely. Well, unfortunately, you know, a lot of my friends are either dead or in jail. Thankfully, a parish priest helped him get back on track, and his reflection behind bars prompted him to make a change one that appears to have stuck. It's kind of nice being a hero for a change. You always were on my life. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.